wonderful. Rumba, tango, cha-cha-cha, samba. I could have danced all night. You <laughs> did. I saw you. Yeah, I'll tell you who else saw you. Who? The receptionist saw you sneak in the back door after midnight. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, she did. <laughs> This is us. We were told to report to the charge nurse, Mrs. Thorpe. Oh, yes, I'm Mrs. Thorpe. What are your names? I'm Miss Lucas. Miss Yeager. Miss Colandria. Miss Wyatt. See, have you ever been on maternity before? Uh, just observing. I see. What about you? That's all. But we've seen lots of training films. And you? Observing. Same here. Oh, boy. They can always rub backs. They're going to have to do a lot more than that tonight. Look, we're jammed to the rafters. And if you stay on your tippy toes, you ought to be half dead by breakfast. But you'll learn a lot more about obstetrics than six months with your noses buried in books. Oh, we'll like that. I assume you're all capable of timing contractions. Have you ever listened to a fetal heartbeat? No, but we're studying it. I've done it. How many times? Once. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. You can take the patient in 401. This is her first child, so she shouldn't have any difficulties. The baby's in good position and her contractions are regular. You, uh... You can look after Mrs. Broom. She's 37 years old and she's having her first child. She's seven centimeters. Her membranes are intact and there's a pit infusion running. Be sure and check her blood pressure, contractions, and the fetal heart every 10 minutes. Mrs. McCoy for you, room 409. Her third pregnancy. She's not due until next month, but she's in early labor. And you take Mrs. Rodriguez in 405. It's her ninth pregnancy. Now she's five centimeters minus one. Mrs. Clark, where are you going? You, what's your name? Lucas, stop her. Oh, let go. Who do you think you are? I'm getting out of this hospital. I don't want to stay here anymore. Look, uh, I think you should come back upstairs. No. I don't ask you to interfere. I tell you I'm going home. What is this, a prison? I can go home if I like, can't I? No one can stop me. Oh, no, 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 please come back upstairs. The charge nurse wants to talk. I don't want to talk to that super charge nurse. Let me go. Oh, no. I wanted to go home. Why did you have to? Now, Mrs. Clark. My name's Janet, not Mrs. Clark. Janet, this isn't going to help you. I don't want to be helped. Don't any of you nurses understand that? I don't want a baby. But you're going to have a baby, Janet, and there's nothing in this world that can prevent it. Isn't there? Take her to a room. I'll be in to talk to you, Janet, when you've calmed down. Room 402. I wish I was dead. I just wish I was dead. have all the luck. Why? What have they given you to do? I have to clean out the medication cabinets. Oh, how thrilling. No, doctor, there's no point in coming up. She was pretty hysterical, but I think we've calmed her down. As I have a student looking after her, I think we'll get her to sleep in the next half hour. We're giving her the sedative you ordered, yes. Mr. 
Mrs. Clark. Mrs. Clark. My name is Janet. Oh, I'm sorry. Mine is Gail. Gail Lucas. How interesting. Uh, I have a pill here for you. Take it yourself. It'll help. Really, it'll relax you. Look, I, I know how you feel, but everything will be all right. I just know it will. What do you know? You're just a kid. What do you know about having a baby? What are you going off duty? It's probably never. But you were on this afternoon. Our night nurse is down with the flu. How's it going, Mrs. Lawson? I'll be with you in a minute, dear. How are the contractions? Coming good and strong? Ooh, but good. <laughs> All I can say is thank heaven for the stuff they give you these days. What do you say, Mrs. Barrett? You ready to give in yet? Try as you will, Mrs. Lawson. You won't persuade me to have my child born under the influence of a lot of deadening drugs. Oh, I don't know. I've had four of them this way, and none of them have become dope pushers yet. <laughs> You'd still be a lot better off doing breathing exercises. I've been trying to tell Mrs. Lawson that childbirth is a natural process, and with the right preparation, any woman can have a baby without pain. Isn't that right, nurse? Oh, that's not for me to say, Mrs. Barrett. It's up to the individual. Well, I don't know about anyone else, but I wouldn't have my child any other way. How many have you had? This is my first. That figures. Now, now, ladies. You're getting close. I better call your doctor. That's a good idea. He almost missed the last one drinking coffee in the cafeteria. <laughs> Janet, you're not going to have your baby tonight, so you might just as well take the pill. Are there any of the magazines day. around here? I've read all these. All right, she needn't take it now. You can take it later if you like. Mrs. Thorpe, mm -hmm. there's a new admission coming up. Shall I admit her? Where's Miss Ayers? Well, she's giving an injection, but I can do it. No, just... dear, you can't. Come with me, Miss Lucas. We'll have to put the new patient in here. Oh, Miss Thorpe, your coffee's getting cold. Is there any other way to drink it? Oh, well, now, Mrs. Really, Jones, you're... find some magazines for Mrs. Clark in there, will you? Why it? Miss Wyatt, see if you can find Dr. Lockhart in the cafeteria. That man's tempting fate again. Uh, page him or get him on the phone. Tell him Mrs. Lawson's ready. Mrs. Thorpe? Yes? About Janet. What about her? Well, isn't there something we can do for her? I'm afraid there isn't. Well, but she's so... Do you want it straight, Miss Lucas? Her parents are divorced. Her mother is probably sunning herself on some warm beach in the south of France or somewhere. Her father obviously considers his business dealings far more important or he'd have been here by now. Well, well what about her husband? What husband? You, you called her Mrs. Clark? Well, as I understand it, they were married a month or so ago, but only for purposes of legitimizing the baby. Oh. Well, I just thought her doctor or somebody should... Her doctor, Miss Lucas has been down in the women's ward for hours, fighting to keep alive the mother of six children after removing a uterine cancer. Now, if you want him to drop her and spend all of his time holding the hand of a confused adolescent, you ask him. Don't expect me to. Dr. Lockhart, 401. Dr. Lockhart, 401. Hello. I'm Mrs. Thorpe and this is Miss Lucas. Lucas, are you Greek? No. Uh, wait a minute. Who's your doctor? There's no entry here. She doesn't have a doctor. You're to call the resident. Did you hear that? What? Call the resident. Which one? Dr. Kennedy. Now, uh, what about the husband? Where's he? Um, my husband is dead um, two months ago. Uh, have you started labor? I know I understand. Are you having any pains? Oh, yes. Um, uh, it is little pain, so I think perhaps I better take bus and and come to a hospital to to find out if it is time. I see. How do you pronounce your name? Uh, Ianopoulos. 
Mrs. Nick Yanopoulos. Yanopoulos? Yes, that's right. It's not so difficult. No. No. Did you, uh, did you call the resident? He's being paid. Well, keep after it. Miss Lucas will go along with you. Oh, thank you. Admit her, take her blood pressure, her TPR, and check her contractions. And don't forget to check the baby's heartbeat after each one. You are the one who said you'd done that before, aren't you? Yes. Did you get uh, Mrs. Larkin, doctor? Mrs. Thorpe! Miss Lucas, have you ever assisted at the birth of a child? Uh, no. Well, you're about to begin. Get in there and start scrubbing. You always do this to me, Mrs. Lawson. No, no, no. I had to leave my apple pie down there. I had only one bite. <laughs> I didn't that sure. At least I made it this time. How do you feel? in a row. Well, there's nothing wrong with girls. Yeah, well, naturally, you wouldn't think so, but five in a row? It could have been worse. She could have had them all at once. Well, I wish she had. I could have been their manager and retired. Wouldn't you like to see the baby? Have you got it here? Well, if you come to the door, you can see her before they take her to the nursery. There she is. Isn't she sweet? Hmm. Well, what's wrong? Well, they all look like their mother. How well, do you think just one of them could look like me? I think she looks like you, even though she is a girl. Aren't you going to wait and see your wife? Oh, you tell her I'll see her in the morning. Once I get the others off to school. I'll tell her to hurry, will you? I've only got a week off. Boy, every two years like clockwork, I have to give up a week's vacation for this. Well, those pots and pans are not going to wash themselves. Hey, I hope you get a boy. Nurse. Oh, yes, Mr. Barrett? How was my wife? Well, last I saw her, she was coming along nicely, doing her breathing exercises. How long do you think it'll be? Well, I, I couldn't say for sure. I'm just a student nurse, you know. Oh. Oh, miss, uh, I'd like to see your head nurse, if I may. Oh, of course. I'll take you to her. Mr. Barrett, he would like to talk to you. Hello, Mr. Barrett. I think you'd better get back to Mrs. Clark. See if you can get her to take that pill. Hmm? Oh, yes. Excuse me. How is my wife? Is she uh, holding up? Oh, I believe so. Is there any reason why she shouldn't? No, no. It's just that... Uh, you think she should be doing this? <laughs> she hasn't much choice, has she? <laughs> Miss Wyatt, see to this. No, no, I mean the way she's having the baby. This uh, natural childbirth method. She's been through all the training for it, hasn't she? Yes, but she shouldn't have to carry it through to the end. She isn't cut out for that sort of thing. She's always been sheltered and protected, you know, first by her family and then by me. She's never been through anything like this alone. Someone's always been at her side, helping her to cope with things. Mr. Barrett, if you'd like to be with her, it's quite permissible. In natural childbirth, husbands are encouraged to be close to their wives. No, 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 I don't want that, no. I want you to help me to talk her out of this. She's a child, you know, once she gets her mind set on something. I don't believe I quite understand you, Mr. Baird. Well, I suppose I'm overprotective towards her. Perhaps it's because she's so much younger than I am. I want her to take an anesthetic. I don't want that girl to suffer. Mr. Baird, go in and talk to your wife. Is she, um, is she in pain now? She isn't in any pain. I think she's rather enjoying it. Oh. Someone to see you, Mrs. Barrett. Hello. 
Hello, darling. Hello, little girl. How are you feeling? Fine. I, uh, wanted to see you. Nurse! Yes? It's beginning to hurt. Well, did you just have a contraction? I don't know. I had something. What's wrong? Well, nothing. I'm just going to listen to the baby's heartbeat. Well? Sounds fine. What do you know about it? I can tell a good, strong heartbeat when I hear it. So? Well, you want a healthy baby, don't you? I don't care what it's like. Just wanted to be over with. Seems to me that's just the beginning. Of what? Of being a mother. And Who's going to be a mother? The baby's going to one of those adoption homes where I'll never see it. So what's the use of going through all this? You mean, you aren't going to keep it? Of course not. Well, what does your husband say? What husband? You're, you're married, aren't you? Sure, I'm married. See? Had to buy it myself. Sure, I'm married. Well, but you never know. I mean, things might be different once the baby's born. How? But when he sees it, he might want it. When is he going to see it? He isn't waiting around for the big moment, is he? Perhaps you ought to phone him. I mean, he, he doesn't know where you are, does he? If he knew... You don't know much about men, do you? I know something about men, little girl. I don't even love Nick when I decide to marry him. I don't even know Nick when I come to America. Somebody else fix it. I cry, I cry all the way on boat. But after a while, something grow. Not just love, something, something better. You work together, you, you buy a house. Something grow. What uh, he want, I want. Uh, what I want, he want. Those are best things in life. You wait, you will find out. Huh? I am sorry, I... I talk too much. No. Hello, Mrs. Yiannopoulos. Uh, this is Dr. Longworth and this is Dr. Cantor. Hello. Hello. I uh, asked them to have a look at you. Oh, all these doctors for me? Is something wrong? No, it's just a routine examination. Oh. You do for everyone? Yeah, that's right. Tell me, Mrs. Yiannopoulos, why have you never been to see a doctor? Well, uh, in old country, we only go when big pain come. Have you ever had rickets? I don't understand. The doctor wants to know if you had enough to eat as a child. If you had any milk to drink. Well, at home we're very poor. We make cheese from milk. We, we drink perhaps only on Saints Day, not every day like here. Why? All right, will you sit up for a minute, please? Yes. Breathe deeply with your mouth open. That hard to do? Sometimes, yes. When? Well, when cleaning house or going upstairs. All right, fly back then. Do you remember having joint pains when you were a child? I don't understand. And pains in your joints, arms, legs. Oh, yes, but at home everybody has that when they grow up. I'm sure. All right. They'll be off now. Is uh, something wrong with the baby, doctor? Your baby has a very good heartbeat. He's very strong. <laughs> yes, of course. It is very strong. It is Nick's baby. It come to take his place, so I'm not just widow in house all my life. You know, everyone asks me if I want boy or girl. I say it's all the same to me. Just so I have baby in house. <laughs> you have relatives, don't you? 
no, uh, I don't. I, I don't even have a godfather to baptize baby. He died in accident with Nick. It was, uh, it was a very bad accident. Well, didn't your husband have any relatives here? Not here, but in Los Angeles, yes. I see, then there is no one. <laughs> don't worry, doctor. It is enough for me to have baby. Will that be all, doctor? Uh, for the moment, yes. Is there something wrong, nurse? No, I'm sure not. Now, try and rest, won't you? <sighs> what choice have you? No choice. The child has to be delivered before it enters the birth canal. Why don't women learn? If she'd have gone to a doctor at the first sign of pregnancy, all this could have been avoided. Well, the poor thing didn't know any better. Even if she'd come in a month or a week ago, we could have eased some of the load that the pregnancy itself has put on her heart. As it is, we start the medication as soon as possible. If we can keep her where she is, we just might make it. Mrs. Thorpe? Yes, Miss Hilkers. I don't understand what's wrong with her. Well, in addition to rheumatic fever, she obviously had rickets as a child. As a result, her pelvis is too small. If we let her have a baby normally, the baby's head couldn't get through. She'd die, and the baby would die. Or they'd have to make a choice between the two. Oh. They don't know if her heart will stand the operation, but... It's the only way. Jimmy, is that you? No, it's Janet. I'm in the hospital. <laughs> Jimmy, you know why I'm here. Um, how are you, Jimmy? Were you really wondering how I was? Um, I didn't know if you still had the same phone number. I thought if you weren't doing anything... Well, like, visitors are allowed here, and I thought... Oh. Well, not now, maybe tomorrow sometime. I don't know what for. You tell me. Nurse. What is it, Janet? I want another shot. I'm afraid I can't give you one until your doctor orders it. Why can't I have another shot if I want one? Why isn't the doctor here? Oh, you're a long way from ready yet. He'll be here in plenty of time. <laughs> what if he isn't? What if the baby should come? Oh, that isn't likely. But if something should happen, the staff doctor will take care of you. But I don't know him. Your doctor does. Now, listen, Janet. When your time comes, we'll give you more medication to ease the pain as much as possible. But why should I have any pain? Because you can't give birth to six or more pounds of baby without feeling it. But, but I, I don't want to have his her. baby. I don't want to. <laughs> Take it to a room. See if you can get her to take that pill. <laughs> My feet ache. We aren't even halfway to breakfast. Mrs. Rodriguez in 205 just delivered in bed. That was my 199th delivery. Well, it'll be an even 200 before this night's out. Why don't you give it up? That's Mrs. Natural Childbirth. For heaven's sake, girl, make up your mind about the thing. 
I figured yourself you worried about, not me. Mrs. Barrett, please. I think you'd better go now. Not until we settle this thing. Well, there's hardly the time for it, Mr. Barrett. There's no point upsetting her. What if she can't stand the pain? Then we'll give her an anesthetic. No, Dr. Parsons promised they wouldn't. He doesn't know you the way I do. You've never been able to handle anything onerous or difficult, have you? I will. This time I will. Alone, Sheila? I won't be alone, will I, nurse? No, of course. I'll be there. I really think you'd better go now, Mr. Barrett. Very well. Paul! Why did you let him come here? I'm so sorry. I didn't realize this would happen. He thinks I can't go through with it. But I can. I'm going... You're not going, Mrs. Thorpe. I'm afraid I must. I'll get one of the students to come in and stay with you, if you like. No, it's not that. R really, it is. I, I don't know why I... I'm sure your doctor would be glad to give you a painkiller if you ask him. It's nothing to be ashamed of. No, no. I don't want it. I won't have it. I want to have it this way. Then you'd better get busy with those breathing exercises. Hmm? Oh, you look beat. You know that? I am beat. No wonder. If I had to take two shifts in a row, I'd be beat, too. Where's our little blonde helper? Oh, I've got her straightening out the linen room. It's <laughs> that impossible. <laughs> Just impulsive. Uh, she emptied a bedpan down the laundry chute. <laughs> There's always one that will. Didn't you? Oh, no. The first time he asked me to sterilize some thermometers, I boiled them. Oh, no. We had 37 broken thermometers. <laughs> I better look after Mrs. Yiannopoulos. Oh, I just did. Oh, she's asleep. Oh, how I wish I were. So tell me, nurse, about being a mother. You know all about it, I suppose. That's not fair, Jen. I'll tell you what's not fair. That I'm lying here in bed and you're sitting there like a little plaster saint. I know how you feel. No, you don't. Stop pretending to be so sympathetic. Shh. you wake her up. Oh, heaven forbid. I don't want any more of her mealy mouth soap opera lectures. I know all about men, little girl. I know love, Nick, when I come to America. But work together, live together, something grow. Stop it! Not just love, little girl, something better. What he wants, I want. What I want, he wants. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You don't know how lucky you are. You'll probably have your baby without a bit of trouble because you're young and healthy. But that poor woman's risking her life to have her baby, and she may not live through it. She's going to have an operation that she's in no condition to have, and she may die, or the baby may die, or both of them may die, so leave her alone! Mrs. Jenna, it's all right. It's all right. Mrs. Dillon, quick, get Mrs. Thorpe. Oh, Mrs. Thorpe, quick. What is it? What's her name? Miss Ayers, get Dr. Kennedy quickly. It's all right, Mrs. Janopoulos. Just try to be calm. What happened? I, I, I thought she was asleep and... and what? And, and what? I, I was telling Janet about her. Uh, about how she might... Dr. Kennedy's on his way up. He said, go ahead and get the IV aminophilin ready. You're going to be all right, Mrs. Yiannopoulos. You're going to be all right. That's enough. She seems to be coming out of it. Doctor. 
Yes, Mrs. Yiannopoulos. Is your baby going to be all right? Yes, Mrs. Yiannopoulos. Your baby's going to be all right. Don't worry now. That's probably what started all this. No, I won't worry. If baby all right, I won't worry. Will I have it soon, doctor? Very soon. We're uh, going to take it by cesarean section. You understand what that means? No. Well, we're going to operate to remove the baby instead of waiting. Why you have to do that, doctor? Because of your heart. It'll be easier for you that way. Oh, I don't mind it being hard. I am used to hard work. Oh, it'll be too hard, I'm afraid. Oh, I see. Nothing will happen during operation. There's every chance that nothing will go wrong. Like, uh, nurse says maybe baby die. Nurse says, uh, operation dangerous for baby. Mrs. Yiannopoulos, your baby is going to be all right. Well, I know I'm not very strong. I've known it for a long time, even before I had baby. But I still wanted it. First for Nick, and then for myself. I know now it is all wrong. Baby is for no one. Baby is for himself. Oh, I want baby only for himself now. It does not matter what happens to me or Nick. As long as we leave something behind. Now, Mrs. Yiannopoulos, you mustn't talk like that. You can help us and your baby and yourself by thinking only good thoughts. What do you call those, doctor? Mrs. Thorpe. What in heaven's name, who told her the baby may die? Do you think it will, doctor? Mrs. Thorpe, you know very well that the details of a case may not Diane. be discussed with a patient. I mean, the woman obviously reacted in an emotional manner. She doesn't seem unduly upset at the present time. No, she isn't, but she went into congestive heart failure. She was given information about her condition that was thoroughly inadvisable. Do you think to that caused the, the attack? No, no, no. I rather expected it would happen after I examined her the first time. I'm glad to know that. I'll bet you are. Nevertheless, please consult me before divulging any information to a patient under my charge. Doctor. I'll call you when I want her taken down to surgery. Very well, Doctor. Mrs. Thorpe? Yes? It's all my fault, isn't it? No one said that. But it is. I just know it is. I shouldn't have said what I did. No. You certainly shouldn't. I, I didn't realize she was awake. I guess I forgot she was there for a minute. You forgot? I, I was just trying to help Janet. I, I felt she needed someone to snap her out of feeling sorry for herself. And did you succeed? No, I, I don't think so, but I, but I had to try. I had to try and shake her out of it. I. Miss Lucas, we are not psychiatrists. If you've been reading books on that branch of medicine, this is not the place to experiment with any fancy theories you might have picked up. It isn't that, it's... Well, in training, we're taught to, to care for the patient as an individual, to, to show sympathy and understanding to any personal problems they may have. And, and that's just what I... Forgive my saying so, Miss Lucas, but you're a little young to be making judgments on the emotional needs of other people, especially when it leads to such drastic action on your part. But if I'm supposed to be a nurse, I... You're supposed to be detached, Miss Lucas. Sympathy and understanding, yes, but always at a distance. Once you start being objective and really get involved in patients' problems, good nursing goes right out the window. But sympathy isn't something you can just turn on and off. You've got to. But what if you can't? Then you shouldn't be a nurse. Perhaps I shouldn't. Wait a minute. What did you mean by that remark? I don't know. I don't think I can do it. Maybe I should give it up. Miss Lucas, you made a mistake. And I'm glad to see you take it seriously. But if you can give up nursing because of something like this, then you didn't have very sensible reasons for coming into it in the first place. No, they weren't. They weren't a bit sensible. I'm sure you'd find them all very silly and childish. Toy nurse kits at Christmas, tying up my little brother's finger with sticky tape, reading children's books about Red Cross heroines in the war. Yes, I've done all that. You can laugh if you like. Everyone at home did. But that hasn't changed anything for me. I've still wanted to be a nurse. 
and not just any kind of nurse. I wanted to be like the first nurse I ever knew. Because all I can remember is what it was like being in that iron lung. All those hours of working and exercising in the pool. All those, all those hours of her teaching me how to walk again. And I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for her. She's all the reasons I want to be a nurse. And if you or anyone else is going to tell me I can't be the kind of nurse she was, then I don't want to be a nurse! <laughs> Mrs. Thorpe? Are you all right? Oh, yes, Dr. Parsons. Take Mrs. Barrett into delivery now, will you? She's ready. Is she going to natural childbirth? She wants to. Of course, we'll put her out if it seems too much for her. Okay? Oh, very well, Doctor. You look in this mirror and you'll see your baby being born. Are you going to be with me all the time? Oh, of course. I have nothing else in my appointment book. Come over to me, dear. That's a girl. Hi. you need it. I don't. No, I know you don't. <laughs> Another contraction. Good. Take a deep breath, Mrs. Barrett. That's it. Hold it. And push. Again. <sighs> Hold. Go. Push. Blow it out. <sighs> oh, that's it. Now relax a little bit. Good girl. Here's your doctor. How are you, Mrs. Barrett? Working hard? This is it, isn't it, doctor? It certainly is. How is she? She's nearly there, doctor. You hear that, Mrs. Barrett? You're nearly there. You're doing fine. Um, excuse me. Is that my baby? Is your name Rodriguez? No, Barrett. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the Rodriguez baby. Oh. oh, oh, Mr. Barrett. Oh, well, your wife's in delivery now. Is she all right? I expect so. You want no. me to give you something? Yes. Yes. You give me something to make it stop. My back hurts. My back. I don't care what he thinks about me anymore. I don't care. No, come on, Mrs. Barrett. Don't give up now. Oh. It's a shame when you come this far. That baby wants help to be born, that's all. I can't bear to see you give in now when you're almost there. Come on now. That's a good girl. That's a girl. You're going to do it. I know you're going to make this on your own. I just know it. Breathe. Hold. Push. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Breathe. Hold. Push. Here we go, Mrs. Barrett. Slow down. Not so fast. Stop pushing. Pant. Little short breath. That's it. Here comes your baby. Yes, here comes my baby. Now, aren't you glad you're conscious? Oh, yes. I'm glad. I'm glad. It's a boy, Mrs. Barrett. He's blue. Oh, just for a moment, he'll be good and pink when he gets through yelling. He's an independent human being now. Just like the rest of us. Heaven help him. What are they doing to him? Just taking his footprints. We want to make sure you get the right one. Oh. 
Mr. Barrett. What is it? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. As they say, your wife has been delivered of a boy. A boy? Is, is she all right? Oh, yes. And she made it all on her own. Oh, she did? Are you disappointed? What do you mean? Your wife is no longer a child, Mr. Barrett. No, she's not. I'm beginning to realize that. You can see your baby shortly. Congratulations. I don't know what it is about these natural childbirths, but they seem to leave me more bush than the mother. Where's Miss Ayers? Oh, what's her name? Oh, Yiannopoulos. I hope everything's all right in there. Oh, must be. Mrs. Dillon, why is it everything happens at night? Because you and I are on duty, that's why. <laughs> you know, sometimes I envy the patients. They don't have anything to do but bear junior. No. Well, one of these days you'll be a supervisor, and then you can sit in the office downstairs and drink coffee all day with the rest of those administration people. They do more than that in the office. It's all I've ever seen them do. That and talk, talk, talk. <laughs> That helped. The only problem now is how do I get him back on again? Oh, I hate to tell you this, but Dr. Kennedy called a moment ago and said he'd be down shortly. And Mrs. Yiannopoulos asked if you could take her in. I don't know what it is about me. Everybody I believe says she's done nothing but twiddle her thumbs for eight hours. But let me come on and every baby in town decides to get born, whether it's time to be born or not. Well, you can always sign up as an airline hostess. I don't think I haven't thought about it. Oh, that beach at Waikiki. Mm. Paris in the spring. Uh, Italy. Greece. <laughs> oh, yes, Mrs. Yiannopoulos. Well, I suppose airline hostesses have just as much trouble with their feet. Or probably. Well, serves them right, lucky birds. don't want baby. And maybe you have a good reason, but wait. Wait just a little bit and see what it is like. When they push you down the hall, you're going to feel it just like me. Like a, like a queen riding down the street and everybody look and everybody going to say, here comes mother. Here comes mother of baby. Is that not so, nurse? Huh? Yes, that's right. And later, perhaps we have the same room, and we be together, and they bring in our babies. I think we'd better go now. Okay. I will see you later. Good luck. Miss Lucas. You mustn't feel bad. It was not because of what you say. No, I lie there. I get scared, just like a young girl, because I have baby alone. It was not because of what you say. <laughs> you understand, huh? I understand. So I will see you later when I be mother. Hmm? Yes. Miss Lucas. I expect you to take care of your patient while I'm in the surgery.
ready, Doctor. I hope it's going to be all right. Of course it is. This isn't the first cesarean section Dr. Kennedy's performed, you know. going to be all right? Haven't you got any work to do? No. Keep yourself busy, dear. That's the best thing. What's happening? You know, with her. I don't know. They're doing it now. Think she's going to be okay? I hope so. So do I. Janet, I know I... What's that? Stethoscope. It's not like the one you had on before. Would you like to hear your heart beating? down on your stomach. Then you can hear your own baby's heart beating. Pressure's dropping. Pulse irregular. What are you waiting for? Have your patients all walked out of the hospital? Miss Lucas! I believe that's your patient, Miss Lucas. Miss Lucas! I can hear it! Wait, it's amazing, I can hear the baby. Its heart is beating so quickly, isn't it? It's amazing. Yes, isn't it? I can't believe it. It's beating inside me. <laughs> 